On this video, I'm focusing on the God Spot. There's a group, a Christian group called Anointed, and one of their songs is called God Spot, which gets at the root of the problem. God has placed a spot, you know, a place in each of us that is meant to be filled with Him. So he prophesied about it in the Old Testament, as with this passage in Isaiah. I will pour out my spirit on your offspring and my blessing on your descendants. Isaiah 44, 3. So 2,000 years ago, God started pouring out his spirit on the faithful right after his resurrection and ascension. You can read about it in Acts 2. So back then, explaining what was happening, Peter addressed the crowd, quoting the Old Testament. So that's what we read in Acts 2.18. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. Those days are what's called the last days, and we've been in the last days for the last 2,000 years. Most Christians talk about the last days just having started, or that they're coming. But the Apostle wrote, in these last days, 2,000 years ago, so anyway, there's this spot, God's spot, and yet we fill it with all sorts of other stuff. Drugs, money, power, fame, sex, violence, a false god, whatever. And Jesus is the only one that will satisfy as the evidence for Christ reveals, which I'll cover on the video after the next one. And he says, my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. He wants us to feed off of him, feed off his word, the Bible. His name is called the word of God, Revelation 19:13. Here's why it's so important that we become born again. Jesus said, you must be born again no one can see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. And what it means to be born again, a genuine Christian, the real thing, right? I can say I'm anything. I'm a doctor. Well, do I have a diploma that's, you know, and the education to prove it? The skills, right? We prove we're a Christian with our life, essentially, is how we prove it. But technically, it's because we have the Spirit inside of us. So in John 14, 23, he told us, if we do this, if a man loves me, he'll keep my words, right? He'll obey me. And when he does that, we, the Father and the Son, will make our abode with him. They'll come and live inside of us. How? By his Spirit. And that's what it says in Acts 5, 32, the Holy Spirit, God has given to those who obey him. But here's the problem. You can obey him for a season, like our girls. They came to the Lord, became born again when they were four preschoolers, right? Jesus says, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these, Mark 10, 14. So we didn't hinder them. We did everything we could when they were young to help them know the Lord and grow in him. But I forget when they, they entered college before they could drive, I had to take them. And we knew that when they were going to go to college, it would be, I think we both knew they would fall. Anyway, I remember we sat at the table and had to talk about it. If you don't stand firm in your faith, God says, you won't stand at all. And because of how it is, Christians have been unfaithful in increasing measure for the last 2,000 years. They haven't stood at all. Adults haven't stood at all. Well, pff, not much chance for a kid, right? Especially 13, 14 year olds in college. <laughs> but that's what it means to be a genuine Christian. You have the Holy Spirit inside of you. And here's the thing. If you're not born again, if you don't have a spirit inside of you, here's why Jesus said it was so important. Right in John 3, 7. You must be born again. And John 3, 3 kind of gets at why. He says, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they're born again. Why is that? Because 1 Corinthians 2, 14, the person without the Spirit, without God's Spirit inside of them, who's not born again, 
does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they're discerned, they're understood only through the Spirit. You need the Spirit to understand the things of the Spirit. That's why you have to be born again. And Jesus made it very clear that it's not just about becoming born again. He said, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. In other words, follow me and I'll tell you what to do. I'll show you what to do and we can work together is the message of the New Testament. So if you watch this whole playlist, which I'm begging you to do, and it seems foolish to you, it's not because it's foolish, but because you're not born again. There is tons of evidence for Christ that he is the one true God and for everything else I'm saying. And there's another very important reason we must be born again. If we're not, if we reject the truth when God reveals it to us, as he's doing through this playlist, which he's been doing our whole life if we're what the Bible calls elect, which I'll cover on this playlist. If we reject the truth when God reveals it to us, he hands us over to a powerful delusion, as we're told in 2 Thessalonians 2, 10 to 11, which says, because they refuse the love of the truth, and Jesus is the truth, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If we refuse to love him, love the truth, and so be saved, become born again, therefore God sends them a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false. And this powerful delusion doesn't just concern God, but everything since all things were created by him and for him, according to Colossians 1.16, for example. So you'll believe lies about God, about history, about yourself, about what's going on in the world, everything. Big, big mistake. But as long as you're alive, you can fix it. You can get right with God by obeying the Lord's teachings and becoming born again, and not just born again, but a follower of Christ. If all you do is become a born again believer, you'll just repeat all the mistakes Christians have historically made. You don't want to do that, as I'm explaining on this playlist.